All right, in a shocking turn of events, we're gonna get started on time. I think, go this way, go this way, go this way, go this way. Okay, or do that, that's the same thing, I guess. Okay. All right, we have a, wait, let's, we're getting started. All right, today, as you can see, we'll have a very special presentation by everybody in the front of the room, so they will be going in order. Uh, I'm just kidding. You can stay there. Uh, if anybody else wants coffee, feel free. There should be plenty for everyone. Uh, feel free to come up for a refill. I promise I won't make you present anything. Okay, uh, first things first. Important things, I'll try to announce this and remind you about this in Discord. Uh, there's evals that happen. I'm shocked that 8% of you have already, 16% of you, well, is that right? No. That's pretty good. 8% have already filled this out. That's actually insane. Um, although the number is the same, and that's weird to me. Why? That seems wrong, right? Uh, that shouldn't be the same there's among both classes. Class. Yeah, but why would it be exactly the same? It's the same people. Exactly, that seems weird. They're not technically in the classes. I actually don't know what you'll see on your side with the two instructors, so. It's the same. It's the same? Okay, dude, then just fill it out, do whatever you're gonna do. Uh, the point is just to do it, that's the important thing. Uh, I don't know, we read this stuff, it's not like it gets ignored, so feel free to tell us what you think. Um, and we will take that into consideration. This has to be a total 27 across both classes. That's the only thing that makes sense. I think, it's, I think it's just funny. It just happens to be, what if I refresh it? Do you think somebody's taking it in this meantime? No. That'd be cool. Okay. And I'll be bugging you about this. You have until the 30th to do this, so please do it. Uh, other thing, anybody care about grades? Oh, they don't care about grades. All right, let's move on. Uh, so I announced this on Discord. Important things. A... Check your grade. I added in all the extra credit uh, and for uh, helpfulness and memes as it was. So that should never go down. It should only ever go up for you as that happens from now until the end of the semester. Um, obviously, I have zero because I'm very unhelpful and I make no memes. So, so if, you d if you think you ha should have something here and you have nothing, what does that probably mean? You didn't link your Discord, exactly. So that's where you go over here, this identity tab, or actually the setup tab, the setup tab. And you didn't follow all these, so you don't have all these five things. So we don't know who you are on Discord, so we can't give you any extra credit for anything you do on Discord. Some of you, that's what you want. That's also totally fine. The one thing that absolutely has to happen if you want a grade, everyone actually want a grade? I mean, it's that or a zero. You either get the grade that you earned or you get a zero. So those are the only two options. Um, the important thing to look at here is this second one. So if you if this is second thing is not a green check mark, that means we don't know what your Pwn College username is and we haven't been able to match that with our ASU student ID. Uh, some people I've already seen have put in their, like, their email style ID, like uh, their email handle at asu.edu as their ID. So if that's you, go over to identity, double check that your ID is here. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna to have to reach out to you and it's gonna be super annoying for me, so I probably won't do it. So you'll get an E in the class and then you'll have to talk to me and then we'll have to do a grade change petition and it's like really annoying. So don't be in that situation. I think there's only like 10 of you or less, somewhere around there, but let's make it zero. Good? All right, cool. Uh, okay, any class-related questions before we finish up? And then I think, I, maybe I mentioned on Monday, but I'm out of town next week, so Connor's gonna be teaching uh, the final two classes. Uh, yeah, but I'll be on Discord, but at weird European hours, so. Okay, nobody go get coffee while I go refill, because this thing's gonna fall away. Thank you.
Any questions on the course while I pour this? Cool. All right. We are, and nobody's raising their hand. Cool. We are going to close out web security. So we've been talking about the differences between origins. So somebody remind us, how does a browser, what's defined as the same origin? What three pieces of information are used to determine if one origin is the same as another? What was it? The port. Port is one, what's else? What was it? No. No. It's all about the URL, the URI. It's parts of the URI. What was it? The domain. Yeah. Let me uh, pull it up here. So the host, the port, and what else? The scheme. Yeah, thank you. So those three make the three tuple of the origin. And this is what your browser allow, uh, uses to say, when fetching this page, can I make another request to that same, to that, uh, to that URI? And this is done uh, very simply. Literally, this is an exact matching check for these things. Uh, so we looked at that. So we can, this is why if we're on page, uh, HTTP colon slash slash example.com, which has the origin of HTTP example.com and 80. If we try to, if we are, that page makes a request to fetch cats.gif, it succeeds because that has exactly the same three tuple, the scheme, the host, and the port. But even if it's the exact same host and port, actually the port, this is incorrect. The port is different here, uh, it'd be 443. But um, even if it was the same port, the fact that the scheme is different means that the origin will be different and the browser will block that and not allow uh, those requests for most of the requests. Cool, so these are all examples. We can have the same scheme. Uh, similar, this is even a subdomain. So this is cats.example.com is not the same origin as example.com. So that still will be a different origin. Okay, cool. Um, but there are cases where we do want to um, send requests in across origins. Um, as we saw, like image tags will cause a request to be issued cross origin um, so that we can fetch those things. And these are the allowed methods and headers that can be made. Uh, as you notice, this is very restrained than what a normal request, so you can't request a get and specify you want a content type of JSON that uh, just straight up does not work. Um, and we can always also read the responses. So and there's actually a lot of, this is, uh, again, we're going an overview of web security. You can get crazy in depth. Um, image tags, so like I said, you can fetch a cross domain image, but within JavaScript, you actually can't read the content of that image of what it looks like because that came from a different origin. And so your browser's engine blocks that because people, before they did that, people used to be able to leak data from other websites because you'd be logged in getting that image. And uh, you wouldn't want the JavaScript on another origin to be able to infer information about that. Um, there's actually a lot of cool, interesting tricks that you can do with here. Um, so these are some of the ways where you can cause the browser to fetch different um, things. And now we're going to get in and talk a little bit about domain names. So the domain names, so everybody, when we talked about networking, what was the purpose of ARP? Yeah, what was the purpose of ARP, the address resolution protocol in networking? Yeah. Is it to match the address of each of the devices in the rack? Not quite. It's not matching, it's uh, mapping it to something else. Yeah. Close. Mapping an IP address to something else at a lower layer of the IP stack, of the networking stack. MAC address, yeah, exactly. So ARP is a way to say, hey, I wanna talk to this, um, 
I want to talk to this IP address. Who has this IP address on my local network? And so then people will have an ARP reply that says, oh, I'm that IP address, and this is my MAC address. And that's how you did ARP spoofing in the intercepting communication challenge, because nobody verifies that. So you were able to say, hey, no, no, I'm that IP address, and you got the traffic that was destined for that other machine. So similarly, even though we know networking works based on IP addresses, right? We talked about how data packets get from one machine on the network and how they hop uh, through. But remembering IP addresses is incredibly annoying, right? We actually have a whole system so that humans can use this. And so that's where DNS is the no domain name system. So that's where domain names come in. This is a way that this maps this human readable name, www.example.com, you can read into, we're not gonna get into the specifics of DNS, but you can read into how it works to translate that to an IP address that your machine then uses to start a TCP IP connection to that IP address. Um, but your browser also needs to know this to understand what constitutes the same site and essentially the same entity. And it has to do when it sends cookies on requests and not, and how you can control that. So. So typically the way DNS works, if you control, if I controlled, let's say example.com, I can make subdomains, like I can make a subdomain www.example.com. I can even go further by adding more dots. I can set it up and go uh, foo.bar.www.example.com. I can do that as much as I want. Uh, and you can see that here with these two examples. So we have pwn.college. There's also a DNS entry for dojo.pwn.college. Um, so that's called a subdomain because dojo.pwn.college uh, is a subdomain of pwn.college. And so for all these examples, when we talk about the top level domain, that's kind of the, essentially the root of the DNS entry, but we don't need to get into those, that level of details. Those are things on the far, you can think of it as the far right. So we have com, so we have example.com, the top level domain is com. Uh, but we have kind of a problem here. Has anybody gone to a UK site before? Like this, you have google.co.uk. Which part is the part that Google owns? Yeah, they actually control the Google part. They don't control the co.uk because there's actually a ton of co.uk's. I don't know actually why this is done and I don't know if there's other blah.uk's. Uh, if anyone's British and knows, uh, please say something. Um, I was only 25 people on Twitch. I guess that's because all of you are here. Huh? Um, so while this is the top level domain, there's actually this problem that we need to know, well, which parts of the domain is essentially special and owned by that entity so that I could say, okay, um, pwn.college and is dojo.pwn.college a subdomain of pwn.college or is it just this college part, which doesn't make sense because it's not enough dots. Anyways, this allows you, and there's a list here. Actually, can we go look at this? Why would I want to validate this? I would just like to go visit my link, please. Yeah, so this is an, a list that you can use. It's a public open source thing that has all of the domain names that are um, top level domains. Oh, let's. Actually, let's look at this. Great. Co.uk. So now we can look at this. We can see ac.uk, gov.uk, ltd.uk, me.uk, net. Anyways, uh, all of these are different top-level domains. The interesting one is github.io. Companies can these things. Yeah, so that's... Uh, let's look at that. Yeah, so github.io, this is a way of GitHub saying, hey, we don't actually control, like whatever, whoever has that subdomain, pwncollege.github.io, that's a different site than adamdupay.github.io, uh, even though it's the same subdomain of github.io. Yeah. Do you have your own top level domain if you post on some server? I guess if you take .com.net, you have like your own custom one. You mean like a dot uh, like college like this or a <laughs> yeah. custom TLD? You have to buy those and they cost a lot of money and I think they would end up on this list. So if you controlled it, I think it would just be like um, if we get, oh wow, we're all the way in the GitHubs. Um, yeah, 
So like here, like UK, so all of everything that's blah.uk would be different except for like these ones. So if you bought one, it would show up on here. Um, and so this is what your browser uses to determine what is the same site. And unfortunately it's very confusing because site and origin are not the same thing. So the site is the effective top level domain plus one. So this means example.com is a site, google.com is a site, google.co.uk, Pwn College is a site, and that way dojo.pwn.college. So this means that kind of you can think of it as a controlling entity. So if I control pwn.college, then I control dojo.pwn.college, mail.pwn.college, anything.anything.anything.anything.pwn.college is considered the same site. Um, and that's what's interesting is having things like github.io now, as we'll see, you can actually kind of tell the browser and the browser knows that those are different sites. Um, is that actually a site? It is, right? Yeah, uh, we have a redirect, but I don't think that works. That works. So yeah, anyways, cool. And so as a web developer, you can actually control what happens and when cookies that are, that your web application asks the browser to set when they are sent to different cross sites. So not cross domains, cross or cross origins, cross origins uh, dictates how we can make requests, but specifically if cookies are sent in those requests. So this is the same site. So this is an attribute on cookies. Let's look. Let's look at exactly what that looks like. Yeah. So here is a cookie. So this is an HTTP response header. So the server sends that in an HTTP response. You know exactly what an HTTP response looks like and what a header looks like. So here we're setting a cookie. The cookie is the name is ID equals to the value. And then attributes are separated with a, a semicolon. So this has an attribute of expires where the website says at what time this cookie is expired and the browser should no longer use it. Um, but we can do lax. Yeah. So the same site attribute is what we're looking at. So we can for sure get an example here. No. Where? Yeah, there we go. So these are all examples of attributes of the same site. So this is how the web application would set that. And so the applications have different ways of doing this. So the default, which is the standard, is um, n yeah. So strict is, as it sounds like, the most strict where the cookie is not sent in cross-site requests. So this means even if we make a request to the browser, uh, even if we try to make a request, it's not going to send it. None is the opposite, where it will basically send it to um, none of the other sites. Uh, so you would you would want none if you're trying to share it among your subdomains. So you set a cookie on like Google.com, and that way www.google.com, other uh, the same sites would be able to access it. Lax is slightly uh, confusing because it has to deal with navigation. So navigation is when you're typing a URL into your browser. So same site lacks would be the cookie is not being sent. Uh, it's only sent as part of that. So it's kind of in between none and strict. We can also specify actually other domains. So as part of the attributes of the cookie, we can specify, hey, send this cookie whenever you visit uh, foo.com, even though that's not considered the same site but I, as the web application, say that I want you to share that cookie. Um, and subdomains, you can use a star or a wildcard to specify these things. Um, the path, so the path is an attribute that you can set on a cookie to say, only send it to this path or this subpath. This way you can modify state and cookies based on what part of the application the user is interacting with. And of course, there are times when we wanna actually break this. So we may want to create a site or a web application 
that we want people to make cross origin requests to our website, because let's say we offer some API functionality that they want to access from JavaScript. So this is with uh, this series of techniques of headers and browser support of cores. So this is cross origin research resource sharing. Oh, I'm going to drink a lot of coffee today. I just realized, um, where the browser, when it's making a request for something, it asks the other server with this options. And if the server supports and cores is allowed, it specifies and the web application can specify different access control policies of, oh yeah, you can request these specific methods. So I can say you only can do get requests. You can't do post requests, um, headers that have to be set. And this way then, um, so then by responding with that, the web, or this is, sorry, the request is what the browser is trying to do. And the allow is if the web application or web server actually wants to allow this content. Um, and if everything checks out, then the request can actually go through. And so, uh, I don't know, for like a silly example, well, not a silly example, but this came up when we were doing uh, hosting DEF CON CTF. So we had a JSON file that specified the state of our game that all the teams could access. And some of the teams actually wanted to fetch that inside of their own web application. So they were making their own GUIs and their own uh, like views of the scoreboard. And so they asked us if we could implement cores so that that way they could, from JavaScript that was running on their own interface, fetch our JSON file so that they could include it in JavaScript and use that to populate their interface. Um, so this is like, the initial drop in the bucket of how insane the web is. If you think about, so we've talked about just in this module, we've talked about uh, URLs, HTTP, HTML. Uh, we didn't talk about CSS, but that's definitely in there. And there could be problems with uh, even style sheets. We talked about JavaScript. We talked about SQL. Uh, we talked about, what's another one? Commands, command injections. Uh, cookies, how cookies actually work. There's a whole RFC of a document about how cookies actually work. Um, and this stuff is just very complicated. Oh, origins. We talked about origins. We talked about sites. It's like 10 different technologies that you could really dig into any of them. And you could have a whole class just on web security and how this stuff can break. Cool. Web questions. All right. I'm going to do something and see if this works. Let's 